today's topic, once again, Tuscany and San Marino. This is our sojourn program uh, for October of next year. Let me say a couple of quick words about Wheel and Anchor, who we are, what we are all about. And the uh, Wheel and Anchor as an organization, we're relatively new. We've only been around since for just over five years. Uh, and uh uh, we we came up with the idea, the concept of Wheel and Anchor um, uh, on the heels of my 33 years of organizing trips for Canadians to all parts of the world. Uh, and uh, I've done groups both large or massive and small. And uh, and uh, the, the, the thing that um, brought me to the idea of, uh, of Wheel and Anchor was the notion of community. Um, and we are a community uh, consisting almost exclusively of Canadian travelers from all across the country. And when you get a bunch of people together, Wheel and Anchor members, we have a vibe as if you, as if it was part of a social club or a golf club or a tennis club or something like that. We're not a club as such, but we respond to another. We relate to each other. The way that we go out and travel the world, the way that we interact with uh, the, the people we meet in the countries we visit, um, the whole feel of it is like a group of fans, friends out on a trip. And we really foster this notion of bringing travelers together, becoming connected to um, one another, and as well as the other pe people that you meet along the way. Um, we always have a smattering of photos from our trips, always smiling faces, lots of laughs, um, and shared experiences. And this is, uh, again, what for us is really, really important. Of course, travel is about the destination, but it's also about who you go with and the, uh, the, the, the fun, the learning, and all those experiences along the way and sharing them with people that at the end of the trip, by and large, you know, you generally care about. And, and we have a lot of our members who've, you know, created friendships uh, through traveling with us. And, and that's something that for me is really important. I've done a ton of travel on my own, and yet I've been so blessed to meet so many great people, uh, Wheel and Anchor members from all across the country. So that's a little bit about who we are and what we are about. Um, I, I will formally introduce ourselves. My name is Gordon Dreger. I am the founder of Wheel and Anchor, and uh, I'm also the person who curates pretty much every single itinerary that we offer um, from my own experience, having been to some 90 some odd countries around the world uh, throughout my travel career. And uh, again, having organized tours for a long time. But of course, I couldn't do it without my amazing team. Uh, and of course, on our front lines, as it were, we have pa Paula and Barb, our trip specialists. Um, Paula is here, joining here live with us today, uh, who are the ones that uh, when you pick up the phone and give us a call, uh, the friendly voice on the other end of the line who takes care of you from the moment you uh, have questions to when you uh, um, decide to join us on a trip. So today I'm going to take you on a little journey around Tuscany and San Marino, although San Marino is hardly a journey considering it's only about 60 square kilometers, uh, but nevertheless, it is a stop on our very interesting sojourn program next fall. Um, and I'm going to uh, say give you a little digital um, introduction to these places. First of all, by way of the map, um, so if you look at your, we are in sort of north central Italy is the area that we're talking about here. Um, our gateway is Florence. So the program begins and ends in Florence. I should note that this program uh, happens adjacent to our immediately preceding our Southern Italian Sojourn, which is a program, um, if you look on the inset map down here, that takes in Campania. Uh, and Puglia. Puglia, of course, is the heel of the boot here, and Campania is down here. So we do have the, um, excuse me, the our southern Italian sojourn that immediately follows. So for those looking to do a month in Italy, this is like the best month-long experience you could do. But of course, this program in and of itself, two weeks, beginning in Florence for the first five nights, five nights then in a wonderful hilltop town called Cortona in the southern part of Tuscany, and then uh, another five nights up in San Marino, which again is this micro state um, here, uh, a little bit more towards the east coast, um, technically actually in surrounded by the province of Emilio, uh, Emilia Romagna. Uh, so that is our uh, map overview. So let's touch on a few of the points. I'm just going to go over the highlights here, uh, and uh, uh, as opposed to the details of each itinerary, because 
Uh, they, you of, course, you, of course, can read that at your own leisure on, in our detailed program itinerary. So it all begins and ends in Florence, um, a city that doesn't need much introduction, unless, of course, you haven't been there before. And so I'm going to give you an introduction. Florence is an incredible Renaissance city. It was really the heart of, um, uh, of Europe, of Italy for so many centuries. Um, this is where the Medici family, who are, you know, largely uh, regarded as having sort of invented money and banks and all the rest of it, for better or for worse. Um, but uh, it all originated here um, in this incredibly grand city where you will see all kinds of architecture. Um, it is, uh, it is, it's a magical place. One of my favorite cities in the world, uh, Florence, is truly amazing. So we will spend a good not a good we will spend five nights here in Florence and the city deserves every single one of the uh, of uh of that time in fact up until uh earlier this year we were actually operating a live away here we were spending two weeks in Florence and even then there's still so many things that could, you you could see but we've switched to this format because uh our members felt that they wanted to sort of get around a bit more and see more of the country but with five nights um, we, we have one free day in there, so you still have lots of time to explore this incredible city on your own. So uh, Florence is where it all starts. You'll arrive in. We don't plan a lot the first day. We're staying right in the heart of the city, um, a stone's throw from Duomo, which is, of course, the massive cathedral that you see here and gives you access to pretty much everything that you want to see in the city on foot. So you can walk from the Duomo uh, down uh, the streets, down to Ponte Vecchio, which is the the old bridge that crosses the River Arno, in about ten minutes. Um, it's just to give you an idea of distance. And then there's uh, a bunch of things on the other side of the Arno or the river as well. But here you're looking at the center of Florence. Um, and so, as I say, the first day we we keep it uh, pretty pretty chill because. Folks have flown in from overseas and are usually a little bit tired, but of course you can um, you can uh, wander around, explore the city on your own when you come in. And then the first full day there, we're going to take you right out and bring you on a food tour. Now, why would we do that on the first day? Well, Italian cuisine. I mean, we all know Italian cuisine: pasta bolognese, uh, spaghetti bolognese, and you know we know the the most famous famous of dishes penne pasta and all the rest of these kinds of things but there are so many nuances to italian cuisine that understanding it will lead to a better experience overall of italy because when you look at a menu and you see all the different kinds of pasta and of course we you know as us non-italians you know we think oh pasta's pasta it's all the same it just has a different shape ah well actually um you will get a very good explanation as to what differentiates pasta um, why these different kinds are different and are suited to different sauces and different meats and all the rest of these things. So we're going to take you around town and show you some of Tuscan food, in particular Florentine food. Um, you're going to have things like papa al pomodoro and ribolita, um, which is like a bread soup that you see pictured here. Uh, we're going to show you uh, all the different cured meats and cheeses. Um, so you're going to get a real overview uh, and an also opportunity to ask questions about uh, cuisine in Florence so that when you dine out over the course of this tour, you'll have a little bit of an understanding as to what is on the menu. And that's kind of our idea behind it. And you'll you'll be a little braver, perhaps, in, in, in trying some of the things that you might not otherwise try. So that's what we're going to do on our food tour. Our tours generally last um, not, not all of them, like Cinque Terre that I'm going to talk about in a second is a full day because we're, we have to travel about uh, a good hour and a half, two hours away from Florence to get to the coast. Um, but otherwise, the food tour will be sort of a morning into lunch. You won't need to eat lunch. Uh, and then you still have lots of time in the afternoon to sort of wander the city, have a glass of wine and just take in all of the hubbub of Florence. Uh, the next day, we're going to head out to see Cinque Terre. Uh, we keep we put this back in because it is high on people's bucket list of places to go. Cinque Terre, which is like the five herbs or the five grounds, is a, 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 a national park of uh, UNESCO heritage designation on the east coast of Italy. Uh, as I say, it's about a, a total journey is about two hours from Florence. Um, which we'll do by train. So it's pretty relaxing. We do leave early in the morning and we're going to do it by private boat. Here's why. 
Um, Cinque Terre is, has become like so many places in Italy, a bit of a mass tourism destination. I was last there in May uh, and the place was an absolute zoo. It was packed. Um, and uh, But we also headed out on our private boat and everyone was very grateful because uh, what you have are five villages that are perched up on the side of the cliffs. Like you see here, this is Vernazza. This is one of them that we'll be stopping at. Um, and so we leave from La Spezia. This is uh, where the railway station is. Well, actually there's railway stations behind each of these villages, but the, 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 the main town that we arrived in from Florence is La Spezia. We got on a boat right there. We go all the way up the coast. We take in these amazing towns from the water because the view from the water is really what it's all about obviously there's some great views in these towns as well and we'll stop at a couple of them along the way um you'll find lots of you know tourist masses and you'll find lots of souvenir shops and this kind of thing so uh we'll we'll have a chance to sample a bit of that but by and large our members say thank you for doing this by private boat because it just makes the whole thing a lot more enjoyable and chill so we'll spend the whole day as i say traveling over by train from florence uh, to Cinque Terre, spend the day, have a lunch at a, a, a lovely spot that we've used before, um, that we visited before on our trips here, uh, and then we'll return back in the evening. So Cinque Terre is a great day, uh, and as I say, what makes it greater is that we go by private boat. We're going to spend uh, a part of the day at Uffizi, uh, and here we have our local guide, Angela Buriani, who uh, we have has been our guide in Florence since we started offering these trips. She is amazing. Uh, talk about a wealth of knowledge. I mean, we're blessed that I found some pretty amazing guides uh, on all of our trips. Um, and uh, Angela certainly is one to beat and, and is uh, she is does an amazing tour of the Uffizi, as it says here, one of the top 10 collections in the world. Um, you'll see the famous works of art like Botticelli's Birth of Venus and the Annunciation by Da Vinci and Caravaggio's works and all of these amazing masters. But not only do you see them, because of course, you know, the Uffizi, it's a timed entrance. Um, so we set it up at as optimal a time as you can. Uh, there are always huge lineups to get in. They shuffle people through. Um, but Angela, because she does this with passion and heart, and she does it like every day of the week, um, knows kind of how to uh, negotiate uh, getting through the Uffizi and seeing not only the most famous of works, but the ones that are meaningful in the context of the story uh, that she tells that links all of these artists together, their heritage, what's depicted in the scenes. It's an amazing experience. Um, and you know, even if you've been to Uffizi before, um, if you haven't done it with a really, really knowledgeable guide like uh, like Angela, it makes it makes a, a massive difference. So um, we'll also do our um, special welcome dinner, even though we're a couple of days in. But we just uh, we do it that way because we have one particular place that we like to bring our guests in Florence that I absolutely adore. I mean, it's hard to find a bad meal in Florence or anywhere in Italy for that matter, but. Um, we still have our favorites, so we'll be heading out as well. So there's time in, in the afternoon uh, between uh, a visit to the Uffizi to, to wander the streets sort of on your own. We've got a full free day in Florence as well planned for you. Again, our members cherish the fact that we include enough free time uh, to be able to wander around and explore on your own. There's so much to see and do in Florence what you might do on your free day. Um, you know, you could go and visit the Boboli and Bardini Gardens, which are behind the Pitti Palace, which is, of course, um, one of the major palaces that belong to the Medici family. Uh, and uh, you could visit Pitti Palace itself, uh, which is a, an incredible, incredible structure. You might go out of town. You might go up to Fiesola, which is a lovely little town, about a 20-minute bus ride away, uh, high up in the hills that overlooks Florence. Um, if you somebody that likes to get out in nature a little bit, um, again, there are any number of things that you can do. Our guide is there. Angela's there. Uh, our, our host is there, I should say. And Angela, our guide uh, on the previous day, can sort of give you some suggestions and point you in the direction of places that you might like to visit in Florence. Um, but we have, in the meantime, a whole bunch of ideas of things that one might do. Uh, uh, you won't be bored, I can guarantee you that. We're then going to uh, leave Florence after five days and drive south about an hour and a half um, into the hills of southern Tuscany, um, into the Val di Chiana, it's called. This is this massive valley. This is a shot taken from 
uh, Cortona, looking out over the valley. There's a massive lake there as well. Um, it's like Tuscan countryside, non plus ultra. I mean, it is really, really amazing. In um, Cortona, we're going to be staying very central. This is a hill town. So I, I say that and I emphasize it because the town is literally on a hill and it is not a, uh, it, it is a pretty steep hill. Um, and so there's lots of steps up and down, uh, no matter where you go, with the one exception of the main pedestrian street through the middle of this town called Via Nazionale, um, on which there are a, a number of shops and amazing restaurants. Um, for such a small town, you think, how do they sustain all these um, restaurants? But they do, and one is better than the other. Um, we're staying close to the center of town. There is, it's unavoidable in a hill town, you have to do a little bit of walking up and down on cobblestone streets. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's not, um, you know, we're not making you walk from the top to the bottom, that would be that would be asking too much. Um, our members really adore Cortona, we have some close personal connections there in town. Um, and the guides as well that we use are beloved and um, we have a marvelous time. So five nights in Cortona, um, right off the bat, we're going to give you a free day. We're going to give you an orientation when you get in. So you'll have a sense of what is where and where you can walk around. It's pretty compact, um, but out on a free day, again, depending on, um, you know, what type of person you are, the types that you, uh, types of things that you like to do, you can very easily um, for example, visit the Etruscan walls of the city. So the city dates back to the Etruscan period. That's the pre-Roman period, going back to like 1000 BC up until the period of Christ, um, when the Romans finally dis dismantled the uh, Etruscan society. But the original walls, and there's a lot of history here in Cortona from that era, which is fascinating, because we generally tend to think of in Italy uh, in terms of things that have happened since um, uh, the birth of Christ. And it's, of course, the prehistory that's, that's very interesting. Um, you can also take a bit of a walk. Um, it's about a 45 minute walk or so back around the backside of town into another lovely valley where you can find this incredible Franciscan monastery. Um, there's some other loops you can do. It all depends on how, you know, if you want to get out and stretch the legs, this is the place to do it. Um, wonderful walks around, or you could just enjoy um, a little uh, cappuccino or a glass of wine in one of the uh, little, uh, little 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 um, bistros that's uh, along the main street of Cortona. Um, again, I don't think you're going to be bored um, because we're going to give you lots of options to do. Um, from Cortona, it's a short hop over to Siena, um, which is uh, another famous town that is, uh, you know, in a way almost equidistant between Florence and. Cortona, but we decided to do it here from Cortona. Um, so we'll get a, a ride up there about an hour to take in one of the most architecturally impressive cities, not just in Tuscany, but in all of Italy. Um, the center of it all, Piazza del Campo, uh, which is an amazing sort of a depressed square uh, with the Campanile, the famous tower that sits above it. Um, and then above all of that on another square, uh, the, the Duomo, the Cathedral of Siena, which um, listen, you can't not see a lot of churches when you go uh, to Europe and particularly in Italy. Um, but I'll tell you, there are churches and there are churches. If you go inside the Duomo in Florence and you see the one here in Siena uh, and, you know, I've seen them all and I'm still blown away by the the work the, and the energy that has gone into creating these places. It is incredible. Uh, and uh, there's an amazing museum that goes along with it. So we're going to have like a combi ticket. Um, we'll have a bit of a tour, but you'll have lots of time to sort of explore the bits and pieces of uh, Siena all on your own. We'll spend a good chunk of the day there, but we'll still be back for in time for ap aperitivo at the end of the afternoon um, back in Cortona. Uh, we are also going to do a, another culinary experience. This is going to be a bit different because this is uh, out in the countryside. In fact, we're going to go and visit a family that uh, have a big farm uh, with about 37 acres of uh, produce, as well as, you know, chickens and hen and geese and ducks. They've got everything. Uh, and so um, we are going to go and get a tour of their whole uh, estate there and uh, as well learn about uh, some of the ancient Tuscan recipes. So you talk about picci, uh, the uh, tagliatelle, which will be more familiar to, to a lot of us, uh, and gnocchi and so on and so forth. So we're going to be shown how to make these different kinds of pasta. And again, the explanation about what makes them different from one another and the kind of things, you know, this sauce goes with this pasta and this one doesn't go with this pasta. 
Um, it's 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 truly an amazing experience. We did it last year uh, with our group. We're going back again because we had a, a brilliant time, and as I say, people really really enjoy um, uh, learning and uh, understanding Tuscan food, but you know also meeting these you know wonderful people from the country because they really are a lot of fun. Uh, Tuscany, of course, is all about wine as well, and we'll have no shortage of wine throughout the trip. Uh, but we're going to make it a, a journey over to another hilltop town called Montepulciano. You'll recognize the name probably off wine bottles from your local liquor store uh, because uh, Montepulciano is sort of one of the more famous uh, names, uh, certainly on, on the market in Canada. There's all kinds of wines throughout Tuscany that, of course, we don't see, uh, but Montepulciano is one of them. It's a great town as well. It also sits up, as I say, on a hill. Um, so we're going to get a tour around. We're going to go to this amazing coffee shop. I think in Italy, all the coffee shops are amazing. But in particular, uh, there's a famous cafe here that is has legendary cappuccino. Um, we'll get a tour around the town and then we'll um, get a, a private uh, tour into a palazzo that is uh, already about 800 years old uh, and uh, uh, was built by a local arist uh, aristocratic family and we'll have some cold cuts and some wine and a, and a grand old time and uh, at the same time still be back in good time so you'll have a little bit more free time to enjoy uh, Cortona since the next day we will head off uh, again to the third stop on our sojourn through this region. And here we're going to San Marino. As I said at the outset, this is a particularly this is a particularly peculiar little place because it's the fifth smallest country in the world and at the same time the smallest and the oldest republic in the world. This little enclave, 61 square kilometers, um, which is, as I say, surrounded by the Italian province of Emilia Romagna, not far from the Adriatic coast, uh, which is, uh, yeah, just about uh, 40 minutes away. Uh, San Marino mostly built, uh, as you can see from this uh, bird's eye uh, photograph, on the slopes of uh, Mount Titano. Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a funky little place. Um, its main industry these days is obviously tourism, uh, but tourism with the duty-free bent to it because it's own republic. It's its own republic, so therefore they can offer everything um, without the uh, high Italian taxes. So you'll find up a lot of Italians that come here shopping for the day. Um, but there's a lot more to see besides that. We're going to go on a trek through uh, town um, uh, trek because the highest point of uh, of San Marino is at 739 meters. Uh, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site that you see here uh, with amazing cliff view. Again, uh, views over the countryside are just uh, incredible. Um, and we'll see a couple of other interesting sites that are particular to um, San Marino. They have this amazing spot that's caught, carved out of the wall called Tanaccia uh, and, uh, and also uh, a, a restored train carriage that uh, um, uh, was was sort of built in part of a tunnel there when they had a train that actually reached San Marino all since uh, from bygone days. So you'll get a, uh, most importantly, you'll get a, a bit of a deeper understanding into this particular microstate and microstates in general, because again, they're not, they don't generally fall on our, uh, our itinerary only because uh, you know, you, you kind of have to go out of the way to get to places like Liechtenstein or, or Andorra and so on and so forth, or San Marino for that matter. We made a point to staying here because I think it's neat uh, and it, it's it's a real cool place. Our touring, though, uh, beyond town, because you could literally walk around San Marino uh, in a day, um, will take into some places in the surrounding countryside. So again, we're here in Emilia Romagna. Um, we're going to visit some beautiful little towns that... Uh, because they're not in Tuscany, they're lesser known, and because they're lesser known, they're less busy, uh, and that's what I like about this aspect of the trip. You know, Florence is a tourist mecca. It's busy. It's amazing. Cortona is still a very well-known uh, uh, place for tourists to visit, so it's still busier, but a lot quieter than Florence is, and then you come out here to Emilia Romagna, and you feel like you're in the real Italy, because although, I mean, you know, you'll find tourists kind of everywhere, but it's a lot quieter out here. Um, and this 
little town is a medieval fortress, which uh, is called San Leo Castle, that has, again, amazing views over the countryside. Uh, and uh, we will do here an olive oil tasting. That's going to be the highlight of the day. Um, olive oils, olives are grown, of course, all across Italy, um, but they have some particularly uh, good uh, olive oil in this area around San Marino. And so this would be a great chance to uh, taste some of that. Um, we're going to do a pasta making class. So previously, we'll have learned about the pasta and how to use the pasta in dishes. Um, we'll have tasted some already in Florence. But here um, at uh, Sant'Arcangelo di Romagna, uh, there's another lovely, lovely town where we are going to be taught on how to make authentic Italian pasta, the flour that's used, um, and the techniques. Uh, I mean, you can probably do a pasta making class at home in Canada, but the ingredients play such an important role. Uh, and I find that, again, it's always a favorite activity is to really understand because, you know, when you've had and sampled real Italian pasta in Italy, it kind of feels like everything else falls short. So this way will give you a chance to try to um, learn about how that all works. And uh, again, a fun day out. Uh, and our last day of the trip, again, a free day that uh, will offer you lots of opportunities of things to do. You could climb up um, the three towers that comprise the, the iconic towers of San Marino. There's a whole bunch of different museums um, in there. There's a curiosity museum, which has some funky, quirky kind of exhibits. Um, there's a torture museum. So for those that like um, sort of uh, a little bit out there kind of museums there's stuff like that you can of course do more hiking and walking around maybe you want to walk around the whole uh state of uh of san marino uh you can um just chill and have a, a an, a, an aperol spritz or a glass of wine at piazza della berta um and of course there's the shopping why we leave the the best day for last in terms of shopping because you're here in san marino and as i say it's duty free so you know, if you were thinking about picking something up, um, you know, most of our members don't join us on trips for the shopping, but that's nice when it um, you have the opportunity to shop someplace that's great and duty free as well. And that will wrap up our trip. Um, we will head from there back to uh, uh, bring you back to uh, Florence uh, or to um, Rimini, depending on um, um, everyone's flight arrangements will bring you to the appropriate place for you to make your onward journey uh, or back to Canada. So all the details on this trip are, of course, in our uh, uh, program itinerary that if you have not already seen a copy, we'll send you one along with a replay of this webinar, or you can, of course, find it on our website. That will include the pricing for this program. Um, so everything, of course, on all of our trips in Canadian dollars, um, as shown here. Uh, it's a 15 night trip, as I mentioned, five nights in each. You've got uh, wonderful hotels with breakfast every day. We've got some great local guides, all of, of course in English um, and uh, sporadically either a lunch or a dinner pretty much every day of the trip, except on free days. So uh, you'll be well fed on top of all of it. Um, so as per uh, our normal protocols, uh, airfare is separate. Uh, we can arrange that for you. Uh, and of course, trip cancellation insurance to get in and out of, uh, of, of Italy at this time of the year. Typically, these are the price ranges. We always qualify by saying prices are about as volatile as ever in the airline business. So, um, but generally speaking, you should be able to get a ticket over for in economy class for around these prices. Um, and of course, um, Paula Barb and uh, uh, the friends, our friends at our air agency will be more than happy to set you up uh, with your air ticket. If you prefer to book it through us, you're of course welcome to do it on your own. Uh, and finally, a little, uh, a little uh, giveaway at the end. Uh, we, because we try to organize these trips early on, if we get members signed up uh, first thing, then we get a bit of a break from our hotel partners uh, on the hotel. So we pass that on to you. So sign up before the end of October, get a couple of hundred bucks off. That's uh, some spending money for the trip. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. So time to answer some questions. Paula, are there any questions that have come in? I know I didn't talk about the weather, so I can always ask that, answer that question preemptively. Um, if you do have questions and, um, uh, would rather chat with uh, Paula or Barb, there's the contact information, uh, and, uh, they're always happy to assist you. So, uh, 
shoot them at me. Yeah, it definitely is a common one that Barb and I receive is, you know, how should members pack? Um, we plan our trips kind of for the shoulder season months. And, uh, and yeah, so the weather, in effect, like the weather that they should be prepared for. Absolutely. Well, October is still a lovely time of the year in, in Tuscany. Um, in fact, the whole month of October. So we were going in early part of October. Um, so, but you, you can generally expect temperatures still in around 20 degrees. It could be 16, it could be 25 um, in October. So, you know, the ranges can be quite high. Um, it's generally fairly dry, but always be prepared for rain um, and it's casual. So you honestly can bring, uh, you know, the same kind of clothing as you would wear back in Canada, depending, depending on where you're from, as you would wear in September. Um, it's that kind of sort of weather, uh, you know, very late summer, early fall, um, and it's casual and uh, good walking shoes. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then I know you touched on that members can join the MLP program, um, and it is common that members will ask about like any pre and post uh, arrangements as well. So um, yeah, yep. with the arrival and departure details, we do provide that in an additional information document. And Precisely. you can assess um, if you do want to stop anywhere else or sightsee anywhere else in Italy before or after this, the trip portion with us. Absolutely. So yeah, you, you know, in fact, a lot of our members will go, I mean, we, we don't, we don't offer a trip in Rome, for example, but a lot of people like to fly to Rome, then you can hop in on the train. Uh, and uh, we can provide you with a train ticket, for example, from Rome to Florence, if you're not going to fly into Florence. Uh, so that's always possible. As I mentioned at the beginning, this trip uh, is followed by our South Italians, Southern Italian sojourn. So if you really wanted to do the grand trip of Italy, uh, or at least, I mean, there's so many parts of Italy. I mean, you could go there a uh, hundred times. I think I've been a hundred times um, and I would go again tomorrow. Um, but as I, sorry, as I was saying, our Southern Italian sojourn uh, takes in the Amalfi Coast. So the, well, actually the Sorrentine Coast um, with a, a boat trip along the Amalfi Coast. So we're there for a week and then we head into Puglia, uh, specifically the area around Albero Bello, uh, um, Loco Rotondo and... Uh, uh, also um, Lecce in the southern part of Puglia. So that trip is immediately following this. Um, so you could link them together. Yes, exactly. And there is still a little bit of availability on the spring trip as well, if anyone is, um, yeah, ah, okay. both, no. <laughs> yeah, both have if availability. In spring and said, yeah, as Paula said, there's a couple of spots left, not many, but there's a couple of spots left. So uh, yeah, if spring is more your... I whether people sometimes ask us should I, should I go yes. spring should I go fall um wow that's a, it's a tough question I either time is is good um you know I've been there in October and it's been uh unseasonably warm I've been there in May it's been unseasonably cool um but for Canadians we're not we're not talking extremes that we're used to it's it's not that bad so I, I can't honestly say October is harvest time so vineyards, you know, fresh grapes and all the rest of it. Not that you, not that it makes any difference because you don't drink the wine until a year later anyway. So, um, but uh, other than that, yeah, spring, fall, I, they're both amazing times to go. Yeah, I think we get that. That's another really great question to have addressed, Gordon. And uh, I think it really, they're much the same. Um, yeah. Yeah, the option. experience is much the same. The weather is much the same. Um, it is shoulder season. I, 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 quite honestly, I don't think there is a shoulder season anymore. I mean, it, it, in places like San Marino, for sure, because San Marino is frequented a lot by tourists that come from Northern Europe in the summertime, and they head down to the beach uh, along the Adriatic coast. Um, so it's definitely a lot busier in summer than it is in, in October. Uh, but to me, in my mind, this is about the perfect time of the year, balancing weather, crowds, um, and uh, just sort of the overall vibe and, and not not being totally caught up in the tourist masses. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Great. That's all the questions that I have that have come in to me. You've addressed them already. So members can reach out to Barb or myself uh, with anything further, and we'd be happy to hear from you. Yep, fantastic. We would be very happy to hear from you. 
And uh, so, uh, yeah, we'd love to you, for you to join us on this trip. Um, we've we've gotten really good at this one, <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it, it's it's a fantastic way to see Italy. It's the right pace, um, and you know, always a fun group of people. So, um, I hope you'll consider joining us. Um, we don't have any other webinars this week, but next week we've got a whole bunch of them, and so we're going to be talking about our Southern Italian sojourn uh, next week on uh, Tuesday, the 3rd of October. We're also going to be talking about our Mekong program next week. Uh, so uh, I, we have a question here. I see from Karen, what happens if the dreaded mandates come back? I won't be vaccinated. Cancellation insurance. Yes, we do highly recommend that you take cancellation insurance. Uh, I mean, obviously nobody can predict the future. We don't know what's going to um, happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, if for some reason, uh, you know, health protocols are introduced uh, by uh, local authorities, then uh, obviously we have to follow those protocols. So we do strongly, strongly recommend cancellation insurance. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, way to go. Good. Um, hopefully that answers all questions. Once again, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, and uh, take care and we'll uh, see you on one of our upcoming webinars. Have yourselves a great day.